Hi guys and welcome to this special webinar about multiple time frame trading. My name is Alejandro Zambrano and I work as a currency strategist for FXCM and DailyFX.com. This is a special webinar that we produced for the uh, International Traders Expo in London last Friday. This is a money show event and uh, we had a time slot where we presented uh, the way I work with the euro dollar. Before we begin, I want to show you guys the risk disclaimer because as you probably know, trading forex can be very risky and it's not suitable for all investors. This is especially true if you do not know which direction you want to trade, where you want to take your profit, where you want to take your stop loss, and the amount of leverage that you use. If you don't really have any clue about those parts, uh, it's can forex will be very risky. Uh, fortunately, Today I'm going to show you guys exactly how to resolve for this. So you will know which direction to trade, where to put your stop loss, where to take your profits. What we will not cover is the money management part, the leverage. Alright, let's begin. What are we going to cover today? Well, we're going to introduce you guys to multiple time frame analysis. To do this, we need to talk about trends and how to combine trends because multiple time frame analysis means that we use different time frames. In our case, we're going to look at the 30 minute time frame, what's happening in the 30 minute, and we're going to combine that trend with what's going on in the 5 minute time frame. So we need to talk about trends. We're also going to talk about our profit and stop loss levels. So let's begin with the most basic, and that's the definition of an uptrend. And it's very important to remember this. And most of you guys probably already heard about this, but the way you apply it is very different compared with the way I apply it. I can assure you that. For me, an uptrend is when price is creating uh, higher lows and higher highs. Nothing more, nothing less. One day we might have a strong rally, then we'll trade a little bit lower. And as you see here, this trend, uh, this rally here is much more slower than the first part and uh, we might even consolidate and do other stuff in between here but as long as price is creating higher and higher lows and higher highs we're in an uptrend in a downtrend which is the same definition just to reverse we're looking for the, this pattern we're talking about lower lows and lower highs what is too important to remember is that in an uptrend the lows are important if we go back we see here that we might or what I do know by my own experience is that we might trade higher and then the second high is gonna be as high as the first high meaning that we're creating a double top but a double top doesn't really mean anything for me in an uptrend so in an uptrend what's important for me that's the lows in a downtrend it's the highs that are important if we create a double bottom, meaning that this low here will equal this low here, it doesn't really matter for me. That's nothing I'm going to trade on. I'm going to consider uh, the trend be intact as long as we create lower and lower highs. So please remember this, and this is uh, something that not a lot of people mention. And uh, take with you that it's the actual pattern that matters. I don't use trend lines uh, except when I want to show guys uh, a, a little bit about the trend but I don't use trend lines when trading at all. So now let's take a look at some real example. This is uh, an example from one of my many updates I've been doing for you guys at the forum. In this case this is the euro dollar, this is a 30 minute time frame and we see here that we're creating higher and higher lows and also higher and higher highs and uh, the key here is of course the lows and I usually use one to two days of data usually well that's what I usually use sometimes up to three days of data so this is a an uptrend for me this is a more defined uptrend we see here that we're creating higher and higher lows so we're in an uptrend as you can see here we did have not created this low yet but I'm expecting price to correct to this level as we are in an uptrend <laughs> this is an example of a double top that is not tradable we see here that three sessions later price literally breaks up above this lows the, the two highs here so this shows us to some extent that double tops are not really so important in an uptrend 
This is another example, and here we have another example of a double top that finally uh, gives up as we're trading higher and higher. What's interesting to see here is that if, if this is an uptrend, by the mere reason that we're creating lower, higher and lower, higher lows, we can see this arrow here. If price would trade below this uh, level here, which is 139.85, then the downtrend is over. And in this case, I do not want to be uh, long the market any longer because we're not in an uptrend. So this is going to give us the trading direction. So the overall trading direction is going to give us our bias. We only enter long positions in an uptrend, and we only enter short positions in a downtrend. And we do not a trend, trade against the trend. So if we take a look at this example again, we can see here they're trading higher and higher, so we want to look for opportunities to go long. This is a 30-minute time frame. This is what's going to be my overall trend. You see here I'm expecting a down move of about 50 pips, but that's an opportunity I will not trade. I will wait until price touches 140 uh, or trades higher here. So I want to trade in line with the trend. I do not want to trade against the trend. This is another example where I'm looking for opportunities to go long the euro dollar. This is the definition of a downtrend. As you might remember, the highs are important here. And in the downtrend, you want to go short. So in a downtrend, we only enter short positions in downtrend. We do not trade corrections against the trend. Same setup. In this case, we see here that we're creating lower and lower highs. Given this, I want to look for opportunity to go short the market. We see here that I'm expecting a short correction, but then I'm expecting price to continue downwards. Given this, I will not uh, go long. I would wait until I can short at a good level. This is another example, and we can see here that in the very short run, we're creating lower and lower lows, sorry, highs, so I want to enter short. I'm anticipating price to correct up here, but then trade lower and reach what's called the S2 level. You see here that I have a trend line pointing higher here, and what this shows is that if we trade above this level, then all of this will not be in a downtrend any longer. And if we're not in a downtrend, I do not want to be short. So if I would short here, and price would trade all the way up here and reach above these levels, I would take my losses. This is a very special, uh, quite common problem sometimes, uh, in this, that we have, we are not downtrend overall, but in the very short run, we're in a rising trend. So we're correcting higher, and giving this information I have here, I'm not sure if we're gonna, uh, if I want to short at 133 or 133.50, just because the trend is a little bit weak. All I do know that I want to short either here or here, as long as we trade below the this level here, which is 133.85. The main reason is, of course, that if we trade above this level, then the overall trend is not pointing lower any longer, and I don't want to be long short in a rising trend. So how do we solve this? Well, this is where the multiple time frame analysis uh, comes in. Because if this section here is our overall trend, if this is the 30 minute uh, time frame, if this is the overall trend that we see right now, we want to be, and then this section here is going to be the first section here, while the red section here is going to be this section here. So. Overall, we had a down leg and another down leg, and then we had a short correction against the overall trend. But we do know that we want to go short because we're in a downtrend. We just don't know if we want to go short here or here. And this red section is where we are right now. So we can see here that in the very short run, we're creating higher and higher lows. This will be our five minute time frame this section here. And what we want to do, and the way we can so, so, uh, solve this problem, is to trade only when the short run trend is in line with the overall trend. So we see here that we're creating higher and higher and uh, a double low. Uh, eventually what happens is that we have a shifting trend. We break down lower 
and we also created a lower high as a consequence of this. So if we look back to the definition of a downtrend, we are now created a low and a high that was lower than the one before and we created a new low. So the short run trend is in line with the overall trend. This is what's called a breakout to the downside. And if we do this correctly and we, we monitor the euro dollar on the five minute time frame, we gotta be able to enter very close to the actual high of the day or the low of the day in case of a uptrend and we will place our stop loss slightly above the high in the 30 minute time frame. Let me show you guys a real example of this. We're gonna show yesterday's uh, example. Let me show you this. This is the analysis from yesterday. Uh, this is the euro dollar April uh, 12th. We see here uh, that we're on an uptrend we created a double bottom right here giving this the short term trend you know the red section that I was showing you guys is now broken so this correction against the trend is now over the short run trend is in line with the overall one so let me show you guys in the chart exactly what happened that day so remember the level 143.80 this is the euro dollar this is 143.80. We see here that we're creating higher and that we're an uptrend more or less. We just don't know how much we're gonna correct lower here. We have some estimations, but we don't really know how much. As an example, we can use like a fib tool here. We see that this is the more or less 50% of the move. This is just an example. But the one problem, for example, with the FIB, is that you don't know if it's going to stop on this level, on the 50%, or on the third level. So what do we want to do? Well, I'm going to see, show you guys. We're going to zoom in with the five minute time frame. And we are creating lower and lower highs which is the important thing in a downtrend please remember that we eventually trade even lower and uh, we finally get some stabilization we initially create a double bottom which is of course not important at all in a downtrend we then break out higher it's clear to see that we are trading that the lows these are the important lows eventually we break out higher so giving this we have a breakout and pretty much the same thing that I showed you guys in the PowerPoint slides the difference is of course that this is a breakdown to the downside so giving this we are in a overall rising trend this short-term trend has just uh, failed and we have now started to create higher highs and higher lows and as you can see this gave us a buy signal at 144.10 the actual low was at 143.80 so we're talking about 30 pip stop loss this of course doesn't have to always be like this and this is not you don't always need to do this uh, you can trade on breakouts higher which I'm gonna show you all right, so I would have entered long here, had my stop loss here, and uh, just went long. Now, let's return to the slides. Uh, so by combining the short run trend, the five minute with the 30 minute, I can uh, get my entries earlier and in uh, good levels. Because if this section continues to trade trade higher, like in this case, if it trades higher, higher, surpasses all of our levels and continues all the way to 140, 134, or maybe 13450, then I don't want to enter any short positions. I'm only going to enter short positions as long as the overall downtrend is in line with the short run. So how do we deal with stop loss levels? Well, the basic uh, level is to basic way is literally just to place a stop loss at the previous 
high and uh, let me show you guys yeah in this case I would have if I entered here I would initially put my stop loss up here which is the same level as here so I'm putting my stop loss at the at the at the high and eventually what's gonna happen is that we're gonna trade lower and lower and lower and giving this I can move my stop loss off to the highs exactly as I show you guys by the definition of a downtrend so we're gonna be short as long as the five minute downturn is intact in this example here you see here that uh, you have a breakout and you can in this case move up your stop loss this is of course you see we have several breakouts on the way up here <laughs> and to some extent we are creating higher and higher lows uh, even here but sometimes it's good to ignore some of these and this is, comes with a little bit of experience and uh, overall in this case we were looking to get profits all the way at 144.75 so I would not be so fast with moving up my stop loss but the key is in either, in either way that every time we have a new breakout we can move our stop loss we see here that we have a breakout an additional breakout here so we are moving up our stop loss eventually hit this level down up here we still have our stop loss here we could of course after this breakout also have put our stop loss here and because this is the most relevant low then we trade higher then we break down and we try to go higher again so now when we created this low here we would move up our stop loss to this level here eventually we break lower and uh, we get our stop loss get hits so we would enter here at 144.10 and exit at 144.75 that equals of course about 75 pips excluding pip costs excluding uh, the spread and that's the basic method of placing your stop loss so as I was saying before we want to trade when the short run trend is in line with the overall trend and to track uh, our stop loss we're gonna track the trend and by tracking the trend uh, we are one securing a bit of a profit but we are in trading as long as the trend is, is pointing higher because as you can see here when we break below this level well then we're not in an uptrend in the five minute time frame so what happens we continue to fall and we fall with an additional uh, 40 pips and if this happens we just wait until the five minute is once again in line with the overall trend now let's go back to the slides I'm not going to show you a more refined way of working with your profit and stop loss levels it's a way to not uh, give up too many of your gains and it's also a filter to know when not to enter a trend uh, a position we're going to use what's called the pivot point system which is a very it's a system that's been around for ages we're going to use the classic settings I'm not going to show you guys how it's derived but I am going to show you guys how it looks like this is the uh, real example and the way it looks like on your system is that's going to show you these lines we're talking about S2, S1, the pivot point level R1 and R2 those are the keys R stands of course for resistance and S stands for support and what we do know what uh, is that a price trades within S2 and R2 83% of the time so 83% of the time price does not exceed R2 that means that just 17% of the time does price exceed above R2 for us this means that we do not initiate uh, trades when price is above R2 the main reason is of course that the probability that's going to continue is very low it just happens 17% of the time so what we want to do is that we want to track the five minute uh, lows and if we do reach R2 we want to take our profit there we also uh, do not want to enter if we are relatively close to R2 because if we are relatively close to R2 then we know that we are very close to the actual high of the day how do we know this? well we know this because we've done statistical tests on this and we know that 17% of the time uh, we do not exceed this level the same is true for the downside so in a short 
uh, in a downtrend, we want to take profits at S2. So remember this, take profits at R2 and S2. Do not enter long positions if price is relatively close to R2 in an uptrend or relatively close to S2 in a downtrend. This is an example of a downtrend. We are trading lower and lower. This is the pivot point. This is the R1. We're trading at S1 here. We could have entered short here. We have a little bit more space down here. But when we start to reach S2 and 129, then we do not really want to enter any short positions. Of course, what would be best, you see, this is a support level. This is a downtrend. When we break out below that this level, that's when we want to enter a short position. And we want to enter as close as possible to the actual entry, to the breakout in this case, to be able to get as many pips as possible uh, for our trade. So that's the key with the uh, pivot point system. I'm not going to show you very quickly how we could optimize this uh, with a live example. I'm just going to upload the pivot points so we have them. So if we entered long here at 144.10 because we broke out higher, we reached today's uh, R2 level, sorry R1, we then traded lower and then eventually we reached R2 and we did reach R2 but we did not exceed this level. So instead of just tracking the lows like we did right here, we had this low here, this low here, this low here, this low here, and then this low here. Instead of you know giving up this, we can just take a profit when we hit this level. So we would not, we have saved about 37 pips uh, instead of having our stop loss here. And we can see here, we start to reach this level, there's really no point of starting to go long here. We see that we eventually, uh, the market rolls over and we start to trend lower and lower and lower. So this shows us the uh, power of the pivot point system. So in this case, to get our, most of our gains, we want to take profits at R2. So to summarize, we want to look at the euro dollar. We identify the trend using the 30 minute time frame. We look at two to three days of data, what's happening, are we trending higher or are we trending lower? Use the basic definition, do not use any trend lines. We want to enter a long position when the 30 minute time frame is along with the five minute, exactly as I was showing you before, guys. We want to take profits at R2, we want to take profits at S2. It all depends if we're an uptrend or a downtrend. You can trade your profits with the five with the trend at the five minute time frame, and uh, you should place place the stop losses uh, at highs in a downtrend and at lows in an uptrend. Of course, this is not a guaranteed system. Uh, you should expect to have at least get it wrong about 40% of the time, which means that you only make gains 60% of the time, which makes it interesting to make sure that you do not risk too much money when you're trading. If you're new to trading, I would not recommend you to risk more than half a percent of your equity on a given day. So, if you need to have a 20 pip stop loss, then you need to make sure that those 20 pips, if you would have lose those 20 pips, that those 20 pips do not give you losses that exceed half a percent of your account. By using the system, you're allow allowing yourself to be wrong several days. You can be wrong for over a month you can be wrong 30 days in a row and you would still not lost more than 15% of your account. So do not risk more than half a percent of your account on a given day. And this of course will generate errors. Does not really work so good when the trends are weakened. But in general, it works quite good over time. How can we improve the results even more? Well, if you are today just looking at the 30 minute and the 5 minute time frame, 
try to include the four hour time frame. You can use the four hour time frame to be able to f spot problem areas. And as you probably understand by the logic of this system, that when the four hour is trading higher and the 30 minute is trading higher and the five minutes is trading higher, then you're gonna be in a really good uh, spot. Of course, this does not happen so often, uh, but that that's why, uh, the, well, it does not happen so often, and that's nothing that we really demand of our system. We do know that just combining the 30 minute and the five minute time frame is enough for us. So how can you quickly uh, uh, get a feeling for this? Well, I would recommend you guys to look at old examples. I have published more than 105 examples of live uh, trading examples on the forum where I, on a daily basis, give you the key levels and I define the trend. By tracking those, uh, you can easily uh, get a good feeling of of the actual trend. This is just for one day. You could uh, watch all 105 of them and you can see how I move and play with my stop loss. And to tell you the truth, what I usually do is I just look at the lows, try to estimate how much we're going to correct using Fibonacci or the pivot point levels and then I wait. In this case here, we had, uh, this is a giving level I don't remember exactly. Well, yeah, we had the S2 levels. This was the S2 level. So we had this key level here. We can see to the left that we do not have any support at all here. So this is going to be a key level. We had the S2. We also had the Fib, 50% of the of the correction, as you remember. So that's an interesting level where I want to buy. It's not close enough to R2 at all. It's actually at S2 instead of R2 we have this shift here this gives us the okay to enter a position with a low risk so this was the uh, uh, this presentation which is of course the presentation that I first presented for the guys at the London Trading Expo and uh, if you do have any questions feel free to contact me and as I say look at these examples and take a look at the videos because on a daily basis I show you guys how I derived the actual analysis and I also show you guys how I would have traded that giving day so by taking a look at this material you can quickly get a good feeling of how the system works and then it's up to you and uh, to uh, analyze the markets following my system getting a feeling of it and uh, hopefully be starting to make a little bit of gains in the uh, uh, when, when trading and before we actually finish I'm gonna show you uh, an outcome of the actual system it's not the actual system but it shows you roughly what to expect if you trade with a low risk following the guidelines what I just gave you so this is uh, as some results this is actually the results uh, of the 105 uh, analysis that I've been doing. In this case, we generated of these 105, we had 75 of those days we had uh, trading signals generated. In our case, because as you probably know, I estimate the maximum low and the maximum high of the euro dollar on a daily basis. And by using this information we can see here that since October we accumulated uh, 1076 pips and this is using a system that is inferior than the one I just presented to you guys because this is a mechanical system there's no thinking going on here And this shows you um, the actual, uh, this is the uh, percentage wise. So if you would have risked, it, risked half a percent of your capital for a giving trade, you would have uh, uh, produced 7.6% on your account 
of course if you would have risked one percent you would have produced uh, double the amount fifteen percent you would of course have lost the this is the drawdown which is the difference between the high and the low and you would have doubled this too of course so this shows you to some extent how to uh, uh, how this system might work I'm going to publish this online. I'm going to talk specifically about this report uh, later on. I'm going to do a special webinar as demanded to explain to you guys how I derive this. But this gives you a brief uh, outlook on how it, uh, how the results might look. And this is, of course, for 105 trades since October. We published other stuff in, uh, in another language, in Sweden to be exact, uh, last summer which showed uh, what our trading during July and October I think it was not July and August and it produced a very similar results so what I would recommend you guys is go to the forum review uh, revise on this material try to get a feeling for this system and uh, do a little bit of demo trading work with it so you start to trust the system and learn uh, how to trade it and this is of course something you can apply on other markets too I apply it very successfully on the commodity markets and other currencies pairs all right guys thank you so much for viewing this if you do have any questions feel free to send me an email if you have any you know uh, product related questions how do I upload my uh, pivot points how do I uh, uh, work with the charts in general feel free to contact your uh, FXCM uh, sales representative but if anything else that's related to the strategy or markets, feel free to uh, send me an email as it's my job to help you out. Thank you.